Lord, as we are in your very presence, filled in awe. Touch us, move us, and let our being never the same again because of who you are. Our great and our awesome God, ineffable, indescribable, beyond thought, beyond imagination. The heavens declare your glory, the stars are singing, and Lord, we join the heavenly chorus singing our praises, how awesome you are, and yet you love us, and you invite us into your presence at any moment, continually. Lord, let us never take that for granted. Let it always move us, that we might be a reflection of you. Let your light so shine that the world might see our Father in heaven and glorify you with us. As we open our hearts in your word, Lord, speak to us. You know the need of each individual. You know the renewing, refreshing each needs, even among them our beloved Pastor Gil. And Lord, we thank you that you can minister to each one of us at the same moment and yet in a myriad of ways because you are, you are everything we need and you are all that we need. Oh, how we praise you, how we fall on our faces before you, and how we lift up our voices in joy and adoration. Kadosh. Kadosh, Kadosh, holy, holy, holy is our Lord God Almighty. In the powerful name of our Mashiach, our Savior, Yeshua Jesus, amen. 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 <sighs> what a great God we have. <laughs> it's just what a great God we have beyond description. Go off mic for a second. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't like it magnifying everything. And I did not expect the emotions, forgive me, but sometimes you just the plug comes out and <laughs> you just have to go with that flow just just to know just to know him just to know him we look forward to that grand future but yet in these moments do we not Get a glimpse, get a taste of what will be ours forever. And I, I remember the part of that song, I can't sing, I'm not even going to try, but will I, you know, when I can only imagine, you know, will I stand, shout, sing hallelujahs while I fall on my face mm -hmm. in awe and in silence. And I know those aren't the actual words, but you get the thought. And, Millie's got the words, but she says she can't get her voice out right now. Oh, you need some water? Okay. But I want us all in that awe. And I agree wholeheartedly with that song, and I believe that we're going to do it all. We're going to shout, sing, praise, jump up and down, run all around, and then in a split second, which isn't because there is no time there, we're going to be on our faces in adoration before him also. And yet, how thankful I am that it doesn't wait for that day, that we get to be in his presence now, that we get to be a part of 
the heavenly chorus now that we get to see his hand move that we get to worship him now and it may not be perfect it may be full of flaws it may be very human but i know he sees through that and he sees the love the heart the desire and meets us there and as we do spend some time now reflecting as we're still on this earth watching another year close did you ever think you'd see in here the end of 2022 <laughs> you know we we think back in time it goes in a heartbeat and yet there's the space that is there also and as we tend at the end of the year to assess and to evaluate and to take into consideration the things that have happened on our path during that year. We begin to look to a new year. Some look forward. There's an anticipation. There's an excitement. They want to wipe the slate clean. They want to start fresh. And it can be a fresh start. There are those who make their resolutions. I'm not going to ask you if you're one of those and how long it takes you to break your resolutions, but we know we never fully get to our hopes and our expectations, or at least we shouldn't because our, our goal should be that sanctification with our Lord. And we know we will never fully attain that till we are home. And even that amazes me, the how, the how we can there, but I know it's because he changes us. And I know that that's what he's doing now as we move from glory to glory as he brings us into that Shekhinah glory of our God. And we look and we think and we assess, we evaluate. And you may be right and you may be wrong. You may be too harsh on yourself and you may not be hard enough on yourself. But we all have those levels and those times and we think. And as I looked at our parsha this week, I saw Yosef look back. He assessed a time that happened in his life. He assessed the difference when he was 17 and the difference when he was 30. And we know those years are growing up years. Just naturally they are. But at 17, he was thrust out of everything that meant anything to him thrust out of his own home, out of his family, taken to a strange land, a land of heathendom, if I can put it that way, a land of idolatry, a land that would be not anything there to nurture his walk with his God. And yet, even when it, it, he first got there in slavery, and then it gets even worse, if you can imagine, but it did because he gets, into the, it gets thrown into the pit, and yet, when he looked back and he assessed, you don't read in the scriptures that he said, this is what my brothers did to me. This is what life did to me. You don't see any woe is me. And you don't see any earthly view of it. When he even is bringing it out to his brothers, and I'm jumping ahead in our story, I'm trusting you all know the story. Yeah. If you don't, you need to read this parsha. It's an exciting parsha. I, I would give anything to be a little fly on the wall when Yosef revealed himself to his brothers. The joy, the ecstasy that 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 just poured out of him. I mean, he he pushed the Egyptians out, closed the doors, and yet the whole palace heard him cry. <laughs> And I know that cry was a mixture of all kinds of emotions. But as he's sharing with them, and they're very insecure because they know what they deserve. They know what they did. And yet Yosef takes it totally out of their hands and says, No, you didn't send me to Egypt. God did. And he saw his circumstances as from God. And I want to encourage each one of us, Sometimes I think we tend to, and maybe not to a bad degree, but to some degree, tend to play the victim. You know, this is what's happened to me. And sometimes we do get into our little pity parties and why, you know, why me and why this and why so much? And we think we look at someone else who's got it easy and we tend to get those thoughts that are not godly thoughts and not assessing it from the view of our God. And I want to take a lesson from Yosef, and I want to be able to look at those hard circumstances. I want to look at those moments in time that 
as we reflect, we can still feel that pain and that hurt that I don't want to look at them through those human eyes. I want to look at them and say, God brought this, and God only brings good, and God only does good, and God is working good, and I may not be able to understand it right now. Joseph turned 18 without understanding, 19, 20, 21. If I kept counting, you'd begin to say, okay, come on, hurry up. Well, can you imagine living it? year after year after year so easily in my mind he could have lost hope so easily he could have been discouraged so easily he could have blended into his new environment yet that environment was not godly it was not honoring the lord it was not worshiping the lord he didn't have a shabbat service like we just had he didn't have an opportunity to with a family feel the presence of his god and yet, the darker the night grew for him, the more I see him shine for the Lord. The more I see him bring the truth to those in the prison with him. And I think what must have been dark and dank must have had a glow because Yosef brought his God into that atmosphere. So as you look back and as you think through the circumstances in your life in this past year, I'm sure if we went around the room, every single one of us could bring out the times of hurt and the times of sorrow. Some of us have dealt with death in this year, and it's still very fresh. It's still very, the tears come immediately. It's, it's not removed by time even yet. Some of us maybe say, well, it, this year wasn't as bad as the year before. And maybe some of you are saying, you know, I had a wonderful year. But I think we all have those ups and those downs. And I, I've brought this together to say, in our looking forward, and I am one to look forward, we cannot change the past, we cannot go back, but we certainly can change how the future affects us and where we are in it. And I say we need to expect the unexpected. I think God must chuckle so many times when we think we've got it planned. We think we know what's coming. We think it's going to go like this. And if nothing showed us that, COVID showed us how in an instant a whole world can change. And we've never come back to the world that was prior. We've called it the new because it is the new, and we know it's always going to have its effect and its mark. And as we expect the unexpected, if we do it from the hand of God, as Joseph did, God took me down to Egypt. God took me into slavery. God took me into the prison. And not as a mean God. This was a loving God who had Joseph's best interest at heart, who was bringing to Joseph the best for him. And as he flourishes in the, the pit, God is able to lift him up and bring him into a more glorious future, the glorious palace. We will be in the palace of our God. And maybe even before 22 ends. I haven't given up hope yet, folks. <laughs> We've got a number of hours to go. And yet, if the hope of 22 has to fade, 23 has grown even brighter. We know that we one day will be in the very presence of our God. That will slip in, into no longer the space that we know. And will touch the face. And that's what amazes me. Our nativity story that I hope you have had the wonder of it all through this season. God answered my prayer. When I asked him, make this season different, I don't want to just mark it. Let me feel it in a new way. Let me experience it. He took me into the wonder. And you remember back in December, I brought that as a start. And it has continued all through the month, all through the celebration continually even in a letter received two days ago where the first words were have a wonderful christmas <laughs> and i thought she got it she's on the same page i'm on and as we looked at the nativity story we focus and rightfully so on the fact that god left heaven and came down to earth that 
blows my mind. I'm sorry, folks, but when I get there, I ain't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> that's my home and yes I will leave heaven with my Lord but I'll never leave the presence of my Lord and I know you understand so I don't need to correct my doctrine you know what I'm saying but I did have the privilege this week also of seeing a, a production that centered around the nativity and it was very godly very honoring to the Lord um, and the one who played the character of Mary, you, you just felt the humbleness within her. And what made this so different for me is they had a live baby, and it was her baby. Oh. And as they came into the, the, the songs that they were singing, the joy of the, the newborn, he awoke, and he started reaching out and touching <laughs> Miriam and touching Joseph. And it just, you heard the awe in the audience. I wasn't the only one that was touched and moved. You know, I hear and I know that my God came from heaven to earth. Heaven came down. Glory fills our soul. We hear it, we sing it, we think it. But when we see it, somehow it just, it, it took on that extra wonder of it all. And I thought, how was it in that manger scene? How was it in the stable? We know we talk about the animals and the dark and the dank and all. But then I see the Shekinah glory fill that place. I see in our song today when we're in his presence and it's showing us that we've entered the Holy of Holies. They try to bring light into it in a way. And I wanted to reverse the story for just a moment because I do want us to dwell on that act. God came and it was never the same again. But we also will go and it'll never be the same again. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Yes, exactly. Yes. And then when I look at our parasha, it just my little heart just flip flops. God took me into all this and then gave it to me in one Hebrew word. The Hebrew word for our partial this week is vayagosh. And vayagosh means to approach, to draw near, to join. And it starts because your first words give the name of the parasha. It starts with, and he drew near. So it personalizes it immediately. And what you have is Judah, Judah coming near to Yosef, his brother. But he doesn't know it's his brother. He's drawing near to this foreigner who is lording it over him, rightfully so. He's in that position, who can say what's going to happen to any of these people. They can be cast into the pit and live there. And I wonder if in Judah's mind he's even thinking, that's what I deserve because that's what we did to our brother. Although they didn't know he went literally into the prison pit, but they knew they sold him off. But he drew near to a disguised Joseph, didn't know it was his very own brother. And what we see in our introduced of the character of Judah in this parasha is the complete and total change that has taken place in him since the time when he sent Yosef into slavery. You know, it was he who suggested it. He who said, let's sell him. And I'll give him credit. It could be that he really didn't want death to be on his hands, didn't want to kill his brother, and it was his out. But it still was wrong. We still know it was wrong. He still should have stood up against the others. Any of them should have and said, no, you know, we're carrying this too far. But this is a Yuda who acknowledged his sin, not the sin that I'm talking about of selling his brother into slavery, but between those years, we have the story of Tamar. And if you don't know the story, you don't have to go read your scriptures. I'm not going to give it all to you. <laughs> but we know that he did not do right by Tamar, his daughter-in-law, and that she, yes, in a bit of a deceptive way, but she made him step up to the plate and do what was commanded of him to do. And when he realized, that's where his character began to change. And it's the first time we have in the Torah where one really accepted their guilt, felt that remorse, and changed by it. 
And he said of Tamar, he said, she was more righteous than I. He saw his fault. He had true remorse. He had teshuva. He really repented. And in that repenting, he became a different man. He was totally changed. And now he's standing before this ruler. And he's pleading for the life of another. And he's saying, take me. Put me into slavery. But let my little brother go home for the sake of the father. Total change. Total change. He had uh, moved in his life with his God. And he had turned at his corrections. And God was able to bring into him more of a God-like character. I love the fact that it talks about him drawing near to Yosef. You know, he was close to him. I looked at that in other scriptures, and I saw that before this time in Bereshit, Genesis chapter 18, and we um, drew near. The same word, Vayagosh. Avraham drew near. And you know who he drew near to? He drew near to the angel of the Lord. And that blew me away. I thought, wow. If I saw the angel of the Lord, would I draw near? How would I react? Abraham was so comfortable in the presence of the Lord, he drew near. And I thought, how exciting. This is when he was going to uh, plead for the city of Sodom. You know, if there are 50 righteous, will you spare the city? And we know that he bargains all the way down to 10, and yet there weren't even 10. But we see that, that drawing near. Yet I've got to tell you, it isn't always used in a, in a light like that because we also have just a little later in chapter 19 of verse 2 that the men of the city of Sodom drew near to Lot's house to break down the door to get to the men that had come into Lot's home for that night. So that was a very negative way. And then I see that we have Yaakov, Jacob, drew near in chapter 27 and verse 27 to his father Yitzhak to kiss his father. This was at the time that under deception he was going to receive the birthright. It was right that he received the birthright. The deception was not right, but what he was doing the, was what God had said. He was the one that was to receive the birthright. But I see this drawing near in these different ways. And then I come back into our parasha and I'm reminded of how Yosef looked at things from God's perspective had that different view. God sent me into Egypt. God took me there. God had a purpose in it. And sometimes we think, well, then that makes God mean. No, God is never mean. Even the circumstances that are hard in our lives are for our best good. It's not a mean God. It's a loving God. If you have a, a child that that is in need of a surgery and you are a doctor, and you don't perform that surgery because, oh, I don't want to hurt my child. The child might die without that surgery, or certainly the, the hurt will get worse without that surgery. God is our surgeon. God is having to do surgery on us, and we're crying out, it hurts, quit, don't, and we withdraw, and, and then we can have that rebellious attitude, or we can let the healing come in, and we can see. God, you were so good. That was exactly what I needed. And that's how Joseph saw it. And as you look back now while I'm speaking on 2022, look back with that 2020 hindsight. You know, it's always good to have the hindsight. But look back and start assessing again those moments in your life that are jumping out that God is bringing to your remembrance right now and see if you cannot transcend it and see those difficulties from a different view. You could, we don't need to be stuck in our past. We call it baggage, that we carry the baggage into our future. We don't need to. We can have a renewed sense of purpose and meaning and not be trapped by our past. But it's a choice that we have to make to choose to see and to look and to view in a way that God would have us to see it, in a way that honors Him. And then we can take those injuries and those hurts and we can understand them and accept them. And even for those who need this word, maybe you're not forgiving someone for hurting you, 
But if you see that hurt from God's hand as the surgeon to bring some sort of healing to you because you were sick, now maybe it'll open that door that you can even come to that point of forgiving the one that you're holding something against. And as a man said recently, over the, the death of his six-year-old daughter at the hands of a man who had murdered her, he said, everything in my flesh wants to rip him to shreds, wants to tear him from limb to limb, wants him to suffer. He said, but in my heart, I hear, and I know he was saying he was hearing the voice of the Lord, and he was saying, I have to forgive. And it's not a gift for that man. It's a gift for myself. And that is so true when we can come into an attitude of forgiving one who is hurt. It isn't for them. It is for us. And we can only do that when we see the perspective from God's view. It's a Corey Tin Boom being able to put her hand out and shake the hand of the guard responsible for killing her sister in the camp when he was pleading for her forgiveness as he walked down that church aisle. This is what our God does. He gives us new vision. He gives us insight. And suddenly our past is not full of these horrible moments. But each of those moments is a touch from God. And I think of God drawing near and us drawing near. And I look further at that word and I take us from the Hebrew into the Greek. God used both languages in our scriptures, I think, because there's such a depth and a meaning in each of them. And this, the word when, when the, uh, the Jewish sages translated the Hebrew scriptures into the Greek, it's called the Septuagint. And when this was done, the word that they chose for Vayagosh in the Greek is in Gizzo. And in Gizzo has a number of meanings and levels, the same way Vayagosh has also. And I love that the one that they pulled out and gave new light and new meaning to, it, it, they define it as this, to come close enough to touch something. That's a whole nother level. We had Yuda leaning in close to Yosef. But then when we have Yosef see Yaakov, his father, for the first time after all those years, you know, his first words when he identified himself to his brethren, he let him know, I'm Yosef. And then he said, is my father alive? Is my father alive? That was what was most on his heart. And he's not only told yes, but it's a matter of a short time <laughs> before he draws near to his father. And he falls on his father's neck. And he kisses him and he cries. And I see again that drawing near. And I think, wow, God. We get this nearness with our God. When we see it in the Greek in Matthew, Matthew 3 and Matthew 4, both times we have Yeshua telling them that the kingdom of heaven is near. That's the word in Yitzhak. So. The kingdom of heaven is via gosh. It's drawing near. It's so close. You can almost touch it. And I think because Yeshua is the kingdom of heaven, how true those words were and how much more depth I see in them now. The Talmudim in chapter 21 of Matthew were drawing near to Yerushalayim. And any who have had the privilege of going to Yerushalayim never will forget your drawing near. There's a feeling that comes over you. There's, there's something that just enters into the soul. And I don't know if it's just my Jewish soul, but I melted in Yerushalayim. I just melted in and blended in and became one with it. The touch was so real. I'll take you to the wall, that wall that represents our people that have survived through the years because of our God. The wall that reminds me of the rock of my salvation. The wall where our people go to put their prayers to touch as close as they can to the holy of holies. And I see the Lord open up that wall and bring us in, right in with our prayers into his presence. No wall of separation, but the feel that is there, the closeness, it is real. And yet also in the, the New Covenant, we have the negative side of it too. And we have Judas who betrayed our Lord 
with a kiss. And in that scripture in Luke 22, it says that he drew near. So it's not always a happy moment, a, a sweet feeling. We have to see it in the whole of the reality. But again, you just carried out the act, but God had planned it. God had ordained it. Yeshua had agreed to it. He was laying down his life that we might via gosh with our God. And Paul, Shaul, Paul was taken into captivity. Also the captain drew near in Acts 21 to take him into captivity. But then the Lord sent me on past this and into the highlight. I came into the book of Hebrews, one of my favorite books. I love the Jewishness of the book of Hebrews. I mean, how can you say it's not a Jewish book? It's got a Jewish name. It's to a Jewish audience. It's so Jewish. It, 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 it leaks Jewishness. And yet it takes everything that was precious to our Jewish people. And in one word, remember my one word when I taught the book of Hebrews, you could sum it up in one word. Better. 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 Better sacrifice, better priest, better priesthood, better blood, everything better. And in Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 19, we read, The law made nothing perfect. And on the other hand, there is the, I'm sorry, there is a bringing in of a better hope. So the law what we had held on to, what gave us our hope, it, it could not. And yet we're being told that there's a, a better hope. Keyword, better. And then here it comes. Are you ready for it? <laughs> I can hear it. Through which we draw near to God. We're hearing the heavenly music. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Through which we draw near to God. We vayigash to God. We engitzo to God. Through into the better, the better sacrifice. That's how we come in. We're drawing nearer, or drawing near, is the way the complete Jewish Bible puts it. And I hear the crescendo because it's showing us, yes, through all the better that Hebrews describes to us, we come in nearer to our God. I hear the song, Nearer My God to Thee. Mm -hmm. And it's the plea and the cry, and yet it's not an empty, it, it happens, we do. And the crescendo comes in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 8, and see it on both sides. It says, draw near to God, and get so to God. Draw near, get a little bit closer. Get close enough, you can touch God. But then look at the flip side. And he will draw near. He will buy you gosh. Mm -hmm. He will get so to you. And I suddenly see it, the, the two sides of the coin. I see the nativity. I see Miriam look at the face of God mm -hmm. that drew near, came into human form to rescue mm -hmm. the human race. But I also see the flip side, and I see us drawing near into the presence of God in heaven. I see heaven come to earth, and earth go to heaven. I see Yaakov's ladder all over again, and we saw how that ladder personified our Lord, our Savior. I want to tell us today, take into the, the coming year with you, draw nearer to God. Draw so close to God you can touch him. You can feel him. You know, it's one thing to say. It's one thing to talk. But it's another thing when you can touch. We're so happy to be a family where we can touch and hug and feel. And that's what we're wanting. And I'm telling you, feel it. In, know it. In every sense of your being, God is there to you and saying, draw near to me. Both pressing in closer. Both coming together. I see the heart shape. Each coming, we are close enough to touch the face of God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 How do we do this? We do this through prayer. We do this through our praises. We do this through trusting in his word. He gave us his word, and he never lies. To Helene, Psalm 16, 8. David said, I have sent the Lord continually before me because he is at my right hand. 
I will not be shaken. He's holding us. He's leading us. He's protecting us. He's surrounding us. He's above and below and all the way 360 degrees around us. Anywhere you reach out, you touch God. You touch him. He touches you. He's available to you, to your touch in your life. Now what negative circumstances are you seeing? Now how can you say this thing is bad? No, you can say, man meant it for evil. This was meant to be bad, but God directed it for good. Do you hear the orchestra? I hear the orchestra. The, that crescendo and that pause. Why pause? The wonder of it all. I don't know if this is the last time you'll hear that from me or not, but it definitely is the Lord bringing me full circle in this season to see, to know, to taste, and to touch the wonder of it all. Wow. And I hear him say, I want that relationship. I don't want ritual. I don't want religion. I don't want formality. I want a person. I want a relationship with you. I want to share your thoughts with you. I want to share your time with you. I want you to draw near. And the scriptures tell us to draw near in spirit and in truth to worship him. The spirit within us is what you're feeling right now, alive and stirring inside of you as you hear the word of God. And I hear the Lord, he himself say, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And I think, yes, this is life. It's not what we're marking on the calendar, and it's not a bunch of circumstances. This is the life. The life is touching God and having God touch me, and I feel his embrace, and I can only wonder at it all. Why me, God? Why you want me? But you tell me, access your throne. Access it any time you want, Rochelle, 24-7. And I have to bring it in our earth, earthly way of thinking. If you were told you get to see, and the closest we have it is a queen. And I guess he is now. we got a king in England. It was the queen. But now we've got the king. And if you were told you were going to get to see King Charles, you would go through the protocols, you'd go through the steps, you'd go through getting yourself all gussied up and you try to do everything right and you'd be told, do this and don't do that, whatever you do, you know, bow, curtsy, you know, all these instructions and then you'd be ushered in and you'd get a moment with the king and it's gone, it's over. And you'd look back and think, what just happened? That's the best our earth can give us for an example. Mm -hmm. Now, do you realize the privilege? You get to burst into the throne room of God, and I picture it. I'm bursting those doors open. I'm coming in like a little child that just comes running in from outside and runs into Daddy's arms. And I climb up in my Daddy's lap, and I sit on his lap, and I feel his touch. Mm -hmm. I hear his heartbeat echoing in my ear, and I'm in that very presence any time I choose. No protocols, no waiting in line, no get cleaned up, no do it this way, and never be told, uh 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 uh. No. I see the smile of the Lord with the little children when they tried to stop them from coming to Him, and He said, Let the little children come to me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. And I realize. I don't have to wait for that eternal moment that I can hardly wait for, but I hear Hebrews 4, 16. Therefore, let us, and here it is again, and get so, by gosh, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. <laughs> Wow, I'm a little kid with a little kid vocabulary again, and that's okay because the hallelujah to my God gets summed up in that. Wow, with confidence, you get to rush in. 
you get to come in. I remember a pastor telling a story of his church congregation, and he had, like every other pastor, you have to have your schedule and the time that someone could come see you. But in the midst of this meeting that this pastor had with someone in his church, through the back door to his office, all of a sudden, boom, in came his little grandchildren. And they ran up to Grandpa, and they were in his lap and on his desk and all over in just a moment. And he didn't stop them. And he just simply told the people who were there, my children know that they have carte blanche to me any time they want. Sorry, you have to wait. They get it. And I think that's our God. Only nobody's being told, sorry, you have to wait. Because I can rush in like that little grandchild and jump into grandpa's lap. And at the same time, you can also. And how God does that, I will never humanly understand. But there's no waiting. There's no confinement. There's no, you've had your time. Now you've got to leave so someone else can. And there's nothing that you're denying. And you get to have him touch you. Wow. No better way to put it than wow. First Peter, Kepha, chapter 4, he also talks about a time of drawing near. Just before he talks about it, he tells us, don't be surprised by the fiery trials. And that's why I say expect the unexpected. Don't expect heaven, glorious, perfect on earth. Expect the fiery trials, but don't be discouraged by them. Instead, let that grow you up in him. Instead, let you learn from them. Instead, let it make you be alert, self-controlled, sober in your mind. Now, why was Kepha saying all that? So that you could be in the purpose of prayer. And I realize we're in that presence by our prayers. The moment that we're praying, we're ushered into that presence. We're experiencing that presence. And when Keith brings it all to us and encourages us to end this life as we wait until we're in our eternal home, in chapter 4 again, verse 7, he says, The end, and get some, the end of all things is near. I think there's many levels he's meaning, but one meaning definitely is he was looking for the imminent return of the Lord. The end was near for him. The end is near for us, whether it be in rapture, whether it be, be in our earthly life. This life passes quickly. Only when life will soon be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. And when we see that and we keep that alert, this could be our last moments. In our last moments, what are we doing? If we're not out Sharing it, preaching it, teaching it, living it, we may miss the last moment to honor our God in that way. And if he so chooses that our last moment is in the midst of a Shabbat service and we get to go from here literally into the heavenly, we've gone spiritually, but if we get to go physically too, hallelujah. However it ends, I want to be alert. I want to be sober. I want to be about my father's business. And I know that I know that I know there's nothing in me that can do that. But the Spirit of God in me says, draw near, draw near, touch and feel. And as one reminded me last night, one wanted to reach out and just touch the hem of his garment. And it brought healing to her. That's all we need is just to draw near. By gosh, and his touch will heal, will enable, will do the purpose of God. Hallelujah. With that, don't be afraid of an unknown future. You've got a God who knows it all. You've got a God who's masterminded it all. You've got a God who has made the plans of the ages, put them in the heavens, and then he's got his heaven singing. You know, the stars are singing. Everything is singing. We're joining the heavenly choruses when we sing and when we are ushered into his presence. The reality being that our eternal home, yes, 
we have to be changed because this body will literally explode. It can hardly contain what it's getting right now as I feel myself touch and I feel God touch me. And I pray that's where you are in the very arms of your God, of your Lord, where you are feeling his arms around you and hearing his heartbeat as he touches you. Fighty gosh, go with God. Oh Lord our God, Master Creator, Divine Physician, Savior, Mashiach, touch us and thank you for letting us touch you. Thank you that we are closer than the heartbeat, that we are literally swallowed up in your presence by your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit. Lord, let the touch go on. Let, it, let us never be the same. Let us see as Yosef saw from your view our circumstances and let us praise you for them, whether they be the fiery trial or the glorious crescendo. Let us see and know it's your touch, so it's beautiful and it's good and we want to hear Thank you for this privilege. Oh, how honored and privileged we are. And all we can say is hallelujah. Praise you. Thank you. Our great God. Amen. 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 I'm flying in the heavens. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Before we open or close with our <laughs> open, we <laughs> should open with it. It was the priestly blessing that was given at the start of the day as they went out. So before we, we have our ironic blessing, let's open our mics. We are family. Has the Lord touched you? Is there a word that you want to say to praise him? Shout it out. Share it. And yet, if you're in the quietness of your heart, we understand that also. But let's just, I, I want to end our last Shabbat with family praise to our God. Anyone? Can you hear me? The Ruiz family. The Ruiz family? Yes. Hmm? My name is Riley Roman Ruiz. You have a new addition. Yes. Mazel tov, mazel tov. And in that precious little gift of life, do you not see the giver of life? How beautiful and how healing for the family. Yes. Beatrice, were you starting to say something? Yeah, we are. I am so thankful that we have him in our lives. Oh. I don't know what we will do. I don't want to know. Like <laughs> we don't and want to know. Well. <laughs> Can you hear? Yes, Sophie. I, I just want to say I feel that this message was just for me and me alone. <laughs> That's our I feel it, it has touched me so much because I've been going through so much this past couple of weeks. Yes. But I want to say this, I never felt alone because I know God was with me, but also yeah. this group, this family was with me also. So I, I've been going through a lot, but I knew I was not alone. And it's just, I just felt this message was just for me. Thank well, you. I love you guys so much. Never. Praise the Lord for that. That's how our God works because Josie, I would have said it was just for me. And the way the Lord has touched me, and I think probably everyone is saying that. That's our God. That's how He does it. How we all can see Him one on one. Yes. It's just amazing. I I just wonder so much, you know, sometimes. He loved me, a wretch like me. Why me? You know, he loved me so much. And Amen. that song, um, if you can only imagine, yes. I, that song 
school. I love that son so much. <laughs> and <laughs> my friend and I <clears throat> talked when that song first came out years ago. <clears throat> and I had always said that this is a song I want them to sing at my service, going home service, because I just gonna fall flat on my face, on my knees. Then my friend told me, she told me that's the song she wants. She didn't know my song, but she told me oh. that's the song she wants. And guess what? My aunt, my aunt that just went to be with the Lord, that's her favorite song. That is her, I, it's everyone's favorite song. I imagine that will be at her service. Yes. yes. And I think it would be everybody's song because we all gonna fall down. Yes. On yeah. yeah. I was given after David went home, I was given a little it's only, you know, very little, but it has when the, the verses of I can only imagine. Yeah. And I had made that comment because my brother said the first thing he wanted to do and the way he pictured himself was sitting Indian style on heaven's floor in a puddle of tears, you know, and just in the awe, you know. And, and I see him in these different ways. So when I had made that comment, someone gifted me with that. And then um, my, my niece slash daughter, Becca, um, gifted we girls in the family with a uh, it's it's quote meant to be an ornament, but none of us are using it that way. But it's um, on, it, in each one she made an honoring between David and us. It's a picture with you know m mine is David with me, of course. And I told her so that there's no way this goes on the tree and then goes and gets put up for a year. No, you know this will find a, a special place. <laughs> and I walked up to my bedroom, and it just hit me right below that little. I can only imagine is where right. this is to be that constant reminder. And Dosi, your aunt and my brother have met. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine that? <laughs> uh. Yes. And we pray for your family. We continue, especially because it's so fresh for you all right now. And how thankful to hear and know it to be true, how the Lord does in the midst of that draw so close that you can say you have never felt alone. That's and beautiful. You know, I, I feel so sad for the people that do not know the Lord because they are alone, you know, alone with the world and Satan and his world. And it's just the joy and the peace inner peace in your heart when you know the lord you're never 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 alone because we are going to go through things but we never alone and it takes a family that i can just hold on to and say you are in this battle with me i'm never alone and this is such a special special last service of this year because we have had a lot yes, of lord. this world yes, and all yes, night Come soon, come soon. Let me go. I'm jealous. I want to go. Yes, yes, I understand. <laughs> yes. Uh, praise the Lord. Anyone else? Yeah, I, I have been reading this for us. Yeah, this, this day, like that by 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 Yeshua and by Igas this time. Uh -huh. I, I I really don't know the meaning of those words, but when you read the Bible, said, well, just like. When Joseph brought his children, Manasseh and Ephraim to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to his dad. Right, you know, right. Said, and it is his dad to his grandchildren. That's how I only imagine it. <laughs> but I really don't know them. They come close, but thank you, thank you. There's so much. Every word is scripture. Yes. The only way I can think yes. to say every word is pregnant. It has so much meaning. And we grasp a word, we grasp a thought, we get excited, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I think to myself, how much more are we missing? What else is in here, Lord? <laughs> yeah, it's just that that's what so excites me about the living word of God is you can never exhaust it. You can never learn it all. You can never attain it all. And yet every little bit of it just thrills your soul. Just thrills your soul. I just said, Lord, to you, to your, Amen. to your love, to your word, Amen. especially my children. My yes, children. yes. I, I and I know all around the room we have 
children or grandchildren or those that we love that we are praying for that same thing for. And I tell you, don't get discouraged. Don't give up. In, in God's timing, it's not ours, but in God's timing, I, I trust we will see what, what, what our hearts are praying for because the Lord says that we have the desires of our heart. We have the answers to our prayers when we are in Him, abiding in Him and praying in His will. How can a prayer for one to be knowing and loving the Lord as we do go unanswered? It couldn't. It couldn't. I, I, I've always seen myself before the throne of grace, always in that like Chinese position. <laughs> now, I've, I've shown you a caricature. Yes. And when you were talking about drawing me, I was telling my, scooting myself down, but my head is still bowed. Until you said the crescendo, that uh, God is also drawing near to uh, me. And so it was that? just like, wow, there's another thing. So I can scoot towards him and he was just like, Call me and grab me. Yeah, Thank you for that word, buddy. Yeah. And, and that's what got me the most out of this, too, and what's still moving me to tears. Yeah. Because we do, we talk so much about wanting to draw near to Him and growing in Him, and I picture us all on that, that journey up. But it, it's what hit me right between my eyes. He's drawing near to me. He's drawing near to me. Sometimes we think we are so earthly and so sinful that we're so small. Mm -hmm. But with what we discussed, he his arms are so huge and big. And I and I see him pick up our bowed images because I'm like you, you know, I'm on my face before him, but I see him pick us up. Yeah. What a confidence. The wonder of it all. I'm a broken record, but get used to it, folks. <laughs> The wonder of it all. It was uh, this Christmas morning when I, I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning, of course, Christmas morning, and uh, my phone was playing Silent Night. Oh. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I listened and I listened, and then I was transported. To the manger, and I was, I was there, feeling and you know hearing all the sounds that was going on, and I can see baby Jesus in the manger, and I was feeling that I, I, I just don't even understand. And uh, and then it was just so wonderful, and it was so quiet, you know, at two o'clock in the morning, and I was in the manger, in the presence of the baby Jesus, and I was like, I wanted to kneel down and worship him and tell him, thank you, dear Jesus, for coming down to earth. And then um, after that, I I was listening to a, a CD of the Sun Minister, and he was talking about drawing near to Jesus and Him drawing near to us. And then he was talking about the first first heaven, the second heaven, and the third heaven. And uh, he said yes. Uh, is the third heaven where Jesus is, and he's seated on the throne, right there. And when uh, the glasses see breaks, and then we'll see him face to face, and I Amen. said, Lord, yes, I can see you face to face. Yes. You're not just a baby Jesus, right. but I will see you face to face. Imagine that. <laughs> I long for that moment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can I come now? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, I get that same. First Corinthians 13, 12. We will see him face to face. Yes. Yeah. And it starts with earlier all with me, his glory now. That we'll see. Yeah. And I said, Lord, finally I will see you. 
I will see your face. I cannot just hide in the cleft of the rock anymore. Mm -hmm. I will see you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What's my Christmas present from the Lord? Absolutely. What a present. Yeah. What a big present. And what a present is His presence. And then at the moment I cried, I was crying, I was bawling. And Tony was snoring. <laughs> that was the cow. You know, oh, the question. What a God. What a God. Yeah. I see Beatrice giving us the heart. Let's go ahead and go into our Ronic Blessing. I'm going to ask Roger after the Ronic Blessing in the background, put it put on, I can only imagine. Just <laughs> anyone who can stay and enjoy, do any who need to go, go. Um, we we love one another. We are mishpacha. We are family. And be it the Lord not come, we will be together again in the new year. I guess Tuesday will be our first time, but we'll be on and going and looking forward to what the Lord has in store for us to do for him, as well as how he will minister to us. As uh, my, you know, this past year, the Lord put on my heart the Shekhinah glory and my constant, you know, beat me up. I want to be in that yep. Shekhinah glory. I want to meal in there, Lord, and, and all. And, and right now, if it stays, my theme and the mantra for 2023 is by gosh, by gosh, near, near, near. You, you need to prepare us for yeah. getting there so we know how to respond when we see the Shekhinah glory. <laughs> I can't begin to tell you how to prepare. <laughs> I, I just explode, Rowena. We just mm -hmm. million little pieces on heaven's floor. <laughs> Hallelujah. And may you go in that peace. Yes, I love you. But even more, Yeshua. Go in the shalom and ahava of our Mashiach. Oh, shalom, shalom. Shalom.